First off guys, what I'm going to do is strip this down and show you the component parts. This is a Bronica ETRSI, an absolutely wonderful, wonderful little machine. Basically, easy peasy. This is your body, your winding mechanism to advance the film. In there is your mirror. That's a just a tripod plate and the battery compartment is under there as well. This is your view screen. You can change these out and put different view screens in. This is obviously the lens. On this occasion, it's a 75mm 2.8, which is a beautiful, beautiful standard lens for this kit. This is your waist level finder. That is what you look through to take your photograph. And I'll show you that in a second. This is your film back. This bit is probably the most intimidating part, or it was when I first got the camera and uh, was learning how to use it. It comes in two parts, or three parts actually. So, four parts actually. So, we're gonna load a roll of film in here. And for this, I'm gonna load up with, let's have a look. Kodak Ektar 100. It's a 120, it's a roll of 120 negative film. So just pop that over there a second. So it's quite easy to do. You just put your take-up spool onto that part there. This part here where you've got that little red mark there, that's where you put your new film, your new roll of film. Tear this little piece off here, this little tab off. Open out the film, like that, insert. Push this little trap in there, and that clips it. And then you wind from underneath down the back of the plate, insert into one of the slots on the take-up spool, use this little winder on the side to wind the film on, and then you're looking for that red mark there, there's going to be a black line with an arrow that comes up shortly, and that's where you stop winding. And keep winding, winding. there it is, there we go, there we go. Beautiful, that's lined up perfectly. So then you take the film cartridge, you slot it into your film back, like so, close the door. Now that is completely sealed, completely light tight. So we've got a film in there now. We're gonna attach the waist level finder. You can get different finders for these. I've got one on its way actually. I won an auction, an online auction recently. And I've got one coming which is a Another, another viewfinder that you can put on top here, and that's called a prism finder. It's a metered prism finder, and basically you look through the prism finder, much like you would do a normal camera, rather than looking down like you do with this finder. So that's that one on, anyway. Take your lens, attach your lens, and then you film back. So this is where it's gonna get interesting. You just tap that on there. Now that's attached. This is your film counter, this little part here. That's your film counter. So what we've got to do is wind this on until we get to number one and it will stop. So you wind, 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 wind. And once you get to the first frame to be exposed, it will stop winding. That's it. That is now prepared for the first shot. This particular camera will not let you take a photograph at all. There's your shutter button and it will not let you take a photograph at all until you remove what is called the dark slide, which is on the other side of the camera there. This is your dark slide. You've got to remove that, which will then let light travel through the lens and to expose your film in this canister. Once that's done, once you've taken your photograph, you cannot release this film back because obviously if you release the film back without the dark slide in, you're gonna destroy the film or a portion of the film. To release the back, you reinsert the dark slide, like so, and then you can disengage the back. Piece of cake. Now the beauty of this is, back in the day, I had three or four different backs, which I preloaded with film, and then as I'm doing the wedding, just slot them on, slot them on, instead of doing all, going through all the rigmarole of loading film. So you could have like color film in one back, you could have a black and white film in another back, you could have different speed film in another back, and you just interchange them as you want. It's just it's a great way of working. Unfortunately, at this moment in time, I've only got the one back, which is quite frustrating. Uh, I will be buying a second back for sure. So you slot that back on there, 
and that is good to go now that is ready to go now obviously this camera is manual everything manual focus manual exposure manual metering as well there's no metering built into this camera so you need one of these things this is a quite a cheap little light meter normal camera will take a light reading from the light that bounces off the camera it's called reflective light but the way i prefer to shoot with this bad boy is by using something called incident light reading look at the light that's actually falling onto the subject so say for instance this one if i was taking a photograph of this this side of the camera so you set your iso first so iso 100 film iso 100 on the light meter i point the meter at the light source give it a press and then it comes up at this f16 30th of a second now i generally shoot between f11 and f8 they're my preferred settings f16 at 130th of a second becomes f11 at 60th of a second f8 at 125th of a second and you can go right down to sort of f2.8 which would give me a thousandth of a second now this particular camera only goes to a maximum shutter speed of 1 500th of a second which then would be come on i just turn it that way which would be f4 that's the maximum i could get out of this without any filters on once you've got the light readings on your worked out on your handheld meter you transfer them obviously on your lens you've got your aperture settings so f11 and down here on the left hand side you've got the shutter speed settings and basically you just wind them on to whatever shutter speed it says At iso 100 60th of a second at f11 and, and that's it you then go out compose your photograph which you do by looking through oops where are we which you do by looking through the viewfinder then also to fine tune your image you've got this little slider here on top and you pop that there and up pops a little magnifier and you stick your eye down there you stick your eye down there and you just manually focus until you've got a beautifully sharp image that's a basic introduction to the Bronica ETRSI which is an absolutely stunning stunning piece of kit i'm absolutely i'm absolutely in love with it to be honest with you i never need my photography reinvigorating i never get stalled with it i never get stale with it i just it just every day is a good day to take pictures with this beast of a camera my enjoyment is is amplified so much i just love it to bits if anybody's got any questions about this camera or the system or photography in general just give me a shout guys and if i can help anybody i'm happy to do so